the BI Platform Studio, and I'm speaking with uh, Nelson Petracek, CTO at uh, Tipco Software. Um, we'll be covering a lot during this interview. A lot has happened since we last spoke with Tipco. Uh, we'll discuss the IBI acquisition, uh, Web Focus, Spotfire, uh, Tipco DQ, the data quality product, data science, and of course, the recent merger with uh, Citrix. Um, Nelson, in the last year, we've seen a lot of development at uh, Tipco with new product offerings, portfolio extensions. Can you highlight the most important ones? Sure. Well, the, if, if I focus around the IBI, let's say to start, since you mentioned it as part of the, uh, the introduction, um, that's been a, a great acquisition for us, comes with a lot of great customers. The, some of the, we'd actually just released a new version of Web Focus, uh, the, uh, one of the core products that came over as part of the IBI acquisition. Uh, it introduces a whole series of new capabilities, anything from containerization, uh, natural language query capabilities, uh, the, the new hub, which is kind of the one one stop shop, if you will, for all things data and reports uh, within the web focus environment, uh, as well as some new analytics capabilities, new design time capabilities and so on. So that, that that's an exciting release for us. One of the first major releases of web focus since the acquisition, and it really gives us a, a solid foundation upon to, uh, to base our, our future capabilities and, and enhancements in that area. Um, but we've been very busy. If you look at some of our other products. Uh, especially with things like Spotfire. Uh, we've also announced a new set of capabilities around what we call mods. Uh, mods are extensions to the Spotfire product where you can build new visuals, you can build new data functions, and we've got some, uh, some other mods planned for the, for the future. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And then with regards to data science, data science is also going through a, a number of new um, capabilities that are being added to it. Uh, this includes the things like data virtualization being used as a way to access data sources, all the way straight through to improving the overall performance of running your analytical pipelines uh, via things like Spark. So uh, if, you look at, if you look at IBI, Web Focus, if you look at Spotfire, data science, there's definitely been a lot of new capabilities that have just recently been announced. And we're definitely excited about what the rest of the year will hold for those particular products. Okay. Well, getting back to the IBI acquisition, uh, can you tell us what, what the rationale was behind the acquisition? Definitely. So a lot of when you when you looked at IBI, great customer base, first of all. So the uh, part of the acquisition, of course, is just the fact that we now get to bring those great customers into the broader TIPCO umbrella, the broader TIPCO fold, if you will. Uh, and also the another element here was that the products themselves are very complementary. When you look at how TIPCO goes to market, we talk a lot about how we can connect to any data source at any location and move data at any speed. We talk a lot about how we can predict insights from data and then also how you can unify data, whether it's regards to things like data management, data quality, and so on. And when you look at the IBI product line, there was a very nice mapping between what they were doing and what TIPCO was doing. And it allowed us to fill effectively some, um, uh, some, some different areas of our product line where maybe we weren't targeting a, a certain persona or maybe we needed to augment our product line in some other areas. And so IBI was a great way to sort of overlay some new capabilities um, and enhance some existing capabilities into the overall TIPCO product line and, and expand our offering to a, a lot of great customers. So a lot of different reasons for the acquisition worked out really, really well. Uh, the integration has gone very well between the organizations and we're now delivering immediate, immediate value to both of our customer bases with both, both, both product lines. Okay. okay, well, you already mentioned a bit of overlap in portfolio. Um, specifically, what's the position of Web Focus in relation to JasperSoft and Spotfire? Yeah, I mean, Web Focus kind of fills uh, that middle uh, section, if you will, okay. uh, when you look at the overall analytics and, and BI spectrum. Yeah. Uh, JasperSoft is very much focused on that pixel perfect uh, reporting mechanism that you can use to build reports and, and other visuals that you can embed in your own applications. Uh, on the other side, you have Spotfire, which is very much focused around rich analytical experiences, building analytical applications with a lot of in-depth data science capabilities. And then web focus kind of fits that, that middle section very nicely. So it's more than just reporting. 
um, but its focus has typically not been targeted purely at the data scientist. It fits very nicely in the middle. And so it really finishes that range or that continuum of capabilities. We can have organizations that are using Jaspersoft for certain parts of their business, web focus that's focused on a certain set of user personas and a certain set of capabilities, and then branch out and leverage Spotfire for some of its advanced analytical capabilities. So it, it really kind of fills that middle area, if you will, uh, around embedded BI and reporting. Um, I already mentioned the data quality product. So uh, Tipco DQ is a new offering within your Unify portfolio. Um, can you explain how it fits in and what the user benefits are for your customers? Sure. I mean, data quality is a, it's one of those technologies that's been around for some time. It got a lot of focus and then it kind of went away for a little bit. And now it's getting a lot of renewed interest in the market. People are realizing that their analytical models are only going to be as good as the data that's fed into them. And if you feed it bad quality data, chances are that's what you're going to get out of your models. So there is a lot of renewed interest around injecting data quality into the overall end-to-end -end data pipeline uh, and make sure that you capture data quality issues close as close to the source as possible and, and address those as close to the source as possible. So that's really where TIPCO data quality is meant to fit. It's meant to be that very open, uh, rule-based data quality tool, which will do things like profile the data for you, but also allow you to define uh, analytical rule and, and rule-driven rules. Uh, to, so that actually explains it correctly, but build these data quality rules, uh, which can be augmented without analytics. That's probably a better way to describe it. Um, and then inject that into any point of your overall data pipeline. So I can take those rules, expose them as services, and then use those services in any other system that wants to leverage the, the power of, of data quality within that environment. So it, it really kind of allows organizations to address their, their data quality challenges and to inject that again into any part of their overall data pipeline or into an overall analytics process. Okay, thank you. Um, how does TIPCO see the future of data science developing within organizations? For instance, you have new, new uh, developments like citizen data scientists, uh, self-service analytics. What is your view on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the use of analytics is broadening across the organization. It, it no longer just belongs to a single group, let's say. Uh, yes, you will still have your group of specialists and people that do that all day, every day for a living, but people, essentially everybody in your organization needs to be able to consume data and analyze data. And it has to be done in a way that's appropriate to their job function. So we see tools continue to evolve to make richer, uh, deeper capabilities when it comes to either visualization, when it comes to analytics, when it comes to just deriving insights from your data, those capabilities are going to be broader and deeper within each of the applications that different users within your organization uh, are, are using. So you, you do have this this need to incorporate different uh, capabilities using different metaphors. Uh, the user experience has to change because you can't be seen as switching from tool to tool to tool. Uh, you need a much more seamless experience when it comes to how users interact with the environment. And again, it's about delivering the right type of data to the right people at the right time. And so it's not just about batch after the fact data, it's also about real time. So you're, you, you see this convergence of things like real time information, data science, rich visual and analytical applications, all those areas are converging so that from a user standpoint, I, I'm just interacting with the tools I need to in order to get my job done. And so, uh, you know, it, it's no longer going to be a whole bunch of separate tools and a whole lot of separate groups that are working with those tools. They're all going to be brought together in a more seamless experience. Okay, okay. Well, finally, uh, we, can't, we can't not discuss Citrix. <laughs> um, <laughs> The Citrix merger has been announced. Um, what do you expect out of this and, and how will it affect your future roadmap? You know, I think a lot of that is, is um, just things really I really can't talk about right now, quite frankly. <laughs> Uh, the, um, you know, as we have to go through the process yeah. and there's a, a whole process, of course, that uh, goes along with taking a company from public to private and uh, all the regulatory approvals and whatnot that go along with that. So uh, unfortunately, I really can't share too much uh, beyond what's in the press releases. Uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of work that's going on and, and uh, the processes that are being followed, as I mentioned. So, uh, but stay tuned. It, it's very exciting. I think it lends itself to some great opportunities. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be able to share more as, as the process uh, evolves. 
Okay, we'll schedule another interview to cover that as well. Absolutely, for sure. Okay, well, thank you very much, Nelson. Yep, great. Thank you very much.